what's up guys there's a uh, new breaking news topic I want to talk about but I didn't feel like setting up the lighting for one of my normal places so we're in yet another part of my room which is why the scenery is different so what is this breaking news topic that I want to discuss real quick well the US launched um, Tomahawk missiles against the Syrian military so before we were at war with ISIS and its um, and its allies we never attacked the Syrian government, the Syrian military directly, but now because of the recent um, military gas attack against Syrian civilians that happened, I believe, two days ago, President Trump decided like it was the best fucking idea to attack Syria itself. So now we are fighting two fronts on this war. We are fighting the Syrian government and military as well as ISIS and its allies as well as any other insurgent group that we deem as radical or extreme which those terms can mean whatever the fuck we want at any given time problematic you know I, side note i don't like when conservatives don't like the word problematic it describes something perfectly it, perfectly if something is like s stupidly retarded but you can't say that in an official document or in a to be professional you just say well it's problematic <laughs> it's so freaking easy anyway Side note, ended. Anyway, so what are my thoughts on this? Well, look at my uh, sign, Gary Johnson. Gary Johnson supported the non-interventionist policy, meaning that he does not want to intervene in other countries' affairs, in other countries' wars. Um, he does not want to be in the 64-plus wars. Doesn't that have the same ring as 100 wars, but I had to be factually correct, so we're only in 64 wars. He does not want to attack any other country that hasn't attacked us. We only attack in self-defense. So on principle, using the rationale and logic that supports not intervening in every single sob story that we find in the world, because there are dozens of sob stories that we can intervene, um, I cannot support this action done by President Trump. You know, I, I, I thought that President Trump was running on not starting World War III and that Clinton was going to attack Syria over its war crimes and start World War III with the Russians. But now Trump seems to be on that very same damn fucking path. And I've on Twitter, I've seen supporters of him really fucking mad that he goes back on yet another one of his promises that he would stop launching wars all, all the fucking time and meddling in other uh, countries' affairs and getting our troops killed, because this will eventually result in military casualties. There's no war that we've ever fought that no soldier has ever died in. So he banked on this during his campaign, and then fucking how long has he been in office? January, February, so within five, less than five months of him being in office, he breaks yet another campaign promise. Let's just add that to the list of promises he's broken, like having Mexico paid for the wall and draining the swamp and defeating ISIS within 30 days. Oh, and not ca not cutting Medicaid and bringing jobs. Let's just add that to the list, which we're getting sidetracked. We're talking specifically about Syria here, but we'll just put that on the list of stupid fucking retarded things that Trump has done. I mean, that list is fucking miles long. You could write books for days on the stupid shit he's done. Side note number two. I bought the second flavor of insomnia. Don't ask me how to say that. It's fucking French or something. But now it's blue. It's blue. So now, I have two out of the four flavors. I don't, I've never seen the other two flavors in grocery stores or anything, so I might need to buy it offline. But okay, we're getting back to the topic here. People will outcry people that are against attacking the Syrian government military. It's like, you don't care about the civilians that they, care, that they kill. You don't care about the babies dying, the children dying, the women dying by the thousands, the tens of thousands, the hundreds of thousands. It's like, I do care. Don't fucking tell me I don't care. As I said in previous videos, I wish the Syrian revolution went down a different path and the moderate rebels, which yes, there were moderate rebels. I hate when right-wingers destroy that narrative because they were moderate, rational, logical people who 
defected from the military, who saw the atrocities that the Syrian government was committing against the protesters in 2011 and had a rational, logical incentive to attack the Syrian government. I wish they had control of the revolution and al-Nusra and ISIS didn't spawn out of his revolution, but I, you know, I can't go back in time and fix that, you know? I wish it went a different way, but it didn't. It went the way of the radicals seizing the vast majority of territory. I'll leave a link to the different areas that different fronts on Syria control. And the vast majority of rebel territory is ISIS or ISIS allies. You know, the moderates have a small, tiny little um, part of territory in Syria. And the Kurds have another section, but they don't want to govern Syria. They... You know, that's they're just an ally at, at this specific time. So attacking the Syrian government, the Syrian military, will not save civilians. It will just cause more casualties. The U.S. has a track record of intervening in other countries, either starting wars or in entering wars that have already f happened, and just completely making the situation 10,000 fucking times worse than it was before. They come in with good intentions, but they are so naive and they are so incompetent at their fucking jobs that they just butcher the entire operation. Let's start with Afghanistan, 2001. Afghanistan is not any better than it was in 2001. The human rights record is of the score of 2001, 2016 is exactly the fucking same. Because guess what? The Afghan government is just as fucking bad as the Taliban. They torture people. They kidnap people. They chop off limbs. They stab people, torture them in false confessions and hanging them all in the name of countering terrorism. They're corrupt as hell. They're just as bad as the fucking Taliban, but they don't have the big name. Taliban. Everyone knows the Taliban is. But Afghan government doesn't sound as bad, so people don't freak out as much. They're just as fucking bad. Look at the human rights reports. I know... That involves a Google search. I know it's really hard for people to do. Somehow these people who are so fucking ignorant on the internet are able to make an email account, then make a Facebook account linked to that email in order to post ignorant, stupid fucking bullshit on Facebook. Be what They can't do a Google search of what is a human rights record of the government of Afghanistan. They can't fucking do it. Otherwise they would see that the Afghan government is just as bad as the Taliban. Okay, so 2001... We butchered the shit out of that one because we spent billions of dollars, lost thousands of soldiers, spent all this fucking money, got hundreds of thousands of Afghanistan's, actually, I, don't, I forget if it's in tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands, right around that ballpark. All those poor people died. The situation is exactly the fucking same. The Taliban still can operate in the vast majority of Afghanistan. Fucking 16 fucking years later. We intervened with the good intentions, which I don't believe the government was in need. They, they knew exactly what they were doing. They were going to war to steal Afghanistan's resources and to have a puppet government in order to get those resources. The Taliban wouldn't give it to them, but we're diverging again. Afghanistan, 2001, complete fuck up. Iraq, 2003, complete fuck up. Libya, 2011, complete fuck up. And now we're going into Syria, 2017, complete fucking fuck up. I will call it. I will link this video like six months later. After we kill hundreds of civilians and dozens of our soldiers are dead and now the Syrian government and the Russian government pissed off at us and I will call it and I'll say I called it, it was a bad idea. Real life unfortunately is more complicated than your fairy tales, your stupid little books that you read, your silly little movies that you read where the good guys just come and kill the bad guys and that will solve everything. No, it's more complicated than that. Real life is more complicated than that. I wish it was that simple, that we could just stroll into Syria, kill all the bad guys, and then no more women and children will be killed. But that it's not that fucking simple. And the people who are backing this do not understand that. Every Syrian soldier we kill in these attacks breeds ten more terrorists from another group of Syrians who previously had no reason to attack us because we were attacking ISIS. We were helping them in their civil war. They had no reason to attack us. But now, they see their comrades, their brother, father, husband killed by U.S. Tomahawk strike, and then they get pissed off as hell as any rational, logical person would if their family member was killed by a government thousands of miles away for some stupid fucking reason. Because that specific soldier... Odds are did not attack civilians with chlorine gas, with military-grade 
you know, the, the gas attacks that just justified this attack in the first place. So he should, they'll be like, my husband didn't do this, but he was killed from it. So now I'm going to attack America. And you wonder why we get these attacks like San Bernardino in the shooting in, in, uh, in Florida. In the attack in New York, I believe in 2011, where uh, Pakistani immigrants or Pakistani naturalized citizens tried to attack the New York Times Square. You wonder why these happen. Because we kill innocent people in the name of saving innocent people. Bombshell, okay, I know it's really hard for people to understand, but not every single soldier in the Syrian government, the Syrian military, not every Syrian soldier in the Syrian military has committed the war crimes that their organization is painted with. It's the same way when we have an Af Afghani, Afghani insider attack in Afghanistan and an Afghani soldier or Taliban uh, undercover kills U.S. soldiers and people bemoan it on the Facebook comments saying, well, these specific U.S. soldiers didn't do anything wrong, so why are they attacking them? You know, because it's impossible to determine. Each individual person who committed a terrorist attack, whether they're in the Syrian military or in some uh, insurgent, there's there's no fucking way you could possibly understand. You can figure that out. So they just attack the organization. Same thing here. The U.S., has killed, I haven't looked at the, the uh, casualties yet, but we launched 50 Tomahawk strikes, that's going to kill at least dozens of Syrian soldiers. We've just pissed off hundreds, if not thousands, of Syrians who before did not have a reason to attack us, and now they're going to attack us. And now, the second point, the Russians are supporting the Syrian government, Syrian military in the civil war, and now they see us directly attacking their ally. Well, what does that give them, give them the right to do? If they want to do the same anti that the U.S. is doing, well, they can directly attack our allies. And that is a slippery slope to World War III. We justify attacking other powerful countries' allies in the name of saving civilians or combat terrorism, whatever fucking buzzwords you want to call it. You know, I, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know you think. Americans are allowed to do other things that every single other country in the face of the fucking goddamn earth is not allowed to do. But there's no such, you can't have double standards. You cannot govern having double standards, not expecting people to get pissed off. So if you expect the U.S. ally, the, if you expect the U.S. to be able to attack Russian allies, Chinese allies, Indian allies, you know, emerging global powers, well then that means they can do it too. This is why the, the situation is more complicated than just good guys versus bad guys. The U.S. has a track record of supporting terrorism. The U.S. have a track record of just butchering interventions in other people's countries' civil wars. The U.S. has a track record of giving arms to other groups who seem good at the time. They seem like they are promoting U.S. interests. Oh, and then they turn around and fly two planes into our buildings. Because Al-Qaeda was our ally in the 80s against the Soviets. But... Pfft, Two decades later, oh, they do 9-11. That's the track record we have. Other people don't forget that shit. I know the U.S. has, like, a short-term memory span, you know, and we intervene in Libya in 2011 and they just complete butcher the fucking situation, and then fucking six years later now, they're like, oh, yeah, let's do it in Syria, too. And then other people across the world who are not complete fucking morons, like, you butchered 2001, you butchered 2003, you butchered 2011, and now you want to butcher 2017. You fucking retarded. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. The U.S. has done Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, and now they're doing Syria. That's simplifying. That's not going to every single of the 64 wars we're in. Those are the major ones. Three times now, we have tried the exact same thing. Hasn't fucking worked. Now we're doing it a fourth time. Oh yeah, like the results will be any fucking different. What is the human rights record of the uh, government of, 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 of Butcher that one. That's going to be the outtakes.